Over the last month, I've been using the Razer phone as my main phone. Today, I decided to talk about the specifications of the phone and review them to let people know if it is worth buying. This is the Razer phone specs video. Hello everybody, my name is Matt and this is a real world review. What I'm going to do is go over the specs of the phone and at the end, I will score the phone based on my personal experiences as a user and cell phone repairman. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. Let's get started. To start, our first category is the outside hardware. Let's start with the display. The display is a 5.7 inch 120Hz IGZO LCD screen with a resolution of 1440 by 2560 totaling 513 pixels per inch. The maximum screen brightness is low at roughly 365 nits, and it definitely shows. The screen has Corning Gorilla Glass 3 covering it, making the front scratch resistant. The screen to body ratio is about 73%, but for good reasons. The screen ratio is 16 by 9, which is also a good thing. Let's talk about the rest of the front. We start with the top where the earpiece and the sensors are. There's a speaker grill looking thing that covers the earpiece and doubles as a loudspeaker. To the left of that is the 8 megapixel front camera. To the left of that is the proximity and ambient light sensor. In the middle of the camera and the sensors is a very small LED for notifications. More on that later. On the bottom portion there is another speaker grill along with another loudspeaker. This means that the phone has stereo speakers. Moving on to the frame. On the bottom is a USB-C port along with a microphone. On the right side, there is a power button with a fingerprint scanner built in, along with a tray for a SIM card and memory card. On the left side, there are two very small unlabeled volume buttons. On the top, there is a hole for another microphone. That's it. On the back of the device, there are two 12 megapixel cameras that protrude out of the back, along with a dual LED flash unit to the left of those sensors. Under that is a unibody metal panel with a Razer logo cut out. As for the size, the device is 158.5 millimeters tall, 77.7 millimeters wide, and 8 millimeters thick, or 6.24 inches tall, 3.06 inches wide, and 0.31 inches thick. As for the weight, the Razer phone is 197 grams, or 6.95 ounces. The phone is not water resistant and does not have a user removable battery or back. And now we move on to the cameras. There are two different 12 megapixel sensors with a dual LED flash. The aperture is f1.75 for the standard lens and f2.6 for the telephoto lens. The phone supports different camera features like high dynamic range, portrait mode, and two times optical zoom. The rear camera can record video in some odd ways. You can only record 4K, 1080p, and 720p at 30 frames per second. And as for slow motion video, you can only capture that with a third party application. More on that in a few minutes. The front camera is an 8 megapixel sensor with a f2.0 aperture. It allows for a max of 1080p recording at 30 frames per second. The next category is the inside hardware. As usual, we start with the processor. The processor in this phone is a 64 bit Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 chip. It is a 10 nanometer octa-core processor with 4 cores running at 2.45 GHz and the other 4 cores running at 1.9 GHz. Geekbench gives the phone a score of around 1,926 for the single core and 6,670 for the multi-core test. The GPU is an Adreno 540 that runs at 710 MHz. When testing the GPU, Geekbench gives the phone a score of around 7,925. This phone has 8GB of LPDDR4 RAM, which is a lot for most flagship phones. Well, unless you're OnePlus. The model I'm reviewing is the RZ35-0215, and it is factory unlocked. The phone supports 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, assuming that the market you're in still supports those, along with LTE bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 12, 17, 19, 20, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, 34, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 66. As for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi chip is a 802.11a, b, g, n, ac dual band, and the Bluetooth is version 4.2. This phone also supports NFC and AGPS. The battery in this phone is a 4000 milliamp lithium ion cell that's supposed to last all day. Razer doesn't have any benchmarks for this battery, but it should last a full day even with medium to heavy usage. This phone does support Qualcomm Quick Charge 4 Plus and provides hours of charge in just a few minutes. 
The phone comes out of the box with Android 7.1 Nougat and has been updated to Android 8.1 Oreo. There are plans for this phone to support Android P when it does come out. This phone supports a bunch of different audio formats like FLAC, OGG, M4A, and WAV. As for video playback, the phone supports a few formats like MP4 and H.264. Now that we have gone over the specs, it's time for me to give this phone a score. Note that this phone comes with 64GB and can be purchased new for $699. It should also be noted that this phone is about 9 months old and most people will want to buy this phone used and the scoring does account for that. Let's start with the frame. The phone is made out of glass and metal with a little bit of plastic. The front is mainly glass and plastic while the back is all metal. The screen is a flat LCD that has a refresh rate of 120Hz. Above and below the screen are two speaker grills that cover the super loud dual speaker setup. There is a very small LED for notifications, but in every light situation, it is very hard to see. Even though the frame is metal, you shouldn't have to worry too much about bending because this phone is pretty solid and pretty thick. The camera lens is glass and it shouldn't be much of an issue because it sticks out just a very small amount. This phone is very large. Well, it is a decent size, but for some reason I thought this phone would be a lot smaller than what it really is. If you're used to large phones like the plus sized iPhones or Galaxy S's, you might be used to this phone already. This phone is a pretty wide, tall, and thick phone, but it is for good reasons. As for the buttons, they're in some odd places. It's a nice look, but at the same time, it's in the middle of the phone, so it's kind of weird when you have it sideways, you don't know exactly if you're pushing volume up or volume down. On the next bit robin, it made a little bit more sense because you knew exactly where they are and they're in a different position as well. Maybe next year they can move the buttons up a little bit more. That's what I recommend at least. This phone has a robust look, but I kind of like it, so the outside hardware will get an 8 out of 10. Next is the screen. This screen is a flat 5.7 inch LCD display with a refresh rate of 120Hz, which means that the screen is twice as fast as pretty much every phone out there. The Sharp Aquos R is technically the first phone with this technology, but it is a lot easier getting a hold of the Razer phone. Sure, the screen isn't OLED, but the refresh rate is amazing. However, having the screen technology does come at a cost. Like I said, the screen isn't OLED, but that's because 120Hz on an OLED screen this size is either not easy to do or will cost way too much to complete. Another downside is not only the screen brightness, but the power required to make this screen. The screen is dimmer than most LCD phones, along with most OLED panels. I mean, even phones like the Samsung Galaxy S5 have brighter screens. On top of that, when the phone gets warm, the screen actually will dim to combat the heat like the iPhone does. Razer says that this is supposed to happen after about half an hour of gaming, but I've had times where I saw the screen dim before I even dropped out of the plane on PUBG. Sure, it's an amazing looking screen and the colors come out looking nice, but at what cost? I mean, after all, it is a 5.7 inch 1440 LCD screen with a standard 16 by 9 ratio. It's meant to be basic, but with some special features. To me, I was a little bit disappointed with this phone because of the screen, but at the same time, the 120Hz screen looks amazing, so the screen will get an 8 out of 10. Make it OLED and brighter, and it might get a 10 next time. Next is the inside hardware. The Snapdragon 835 processor was the top of the line in 2017, but it still is pretty awesome in 2018. With almost stock Android on this phone, this phone seems to be the fastest phone out there, but that might be because of the 120Hz screen. The 4000 milliamp battery in this phone is pretty awesome. I had some issues when I initially got the phone, but the battery life dramatically increased after a couple days. I would have to say that this is the best battery life that I've seen in a phone, but I feel like it's because of the screen brightness. Still, having a huge battery doesn't always mean that the battery life is going to be good, but in this phone it worked out pretty well. With basic usage, you might actually be able to get two days out of this battery, but really what matters is the gaming on this phone. You should be able to get a couple hours of gaming out of this phone and still get through the day without worrying about the battery dying. Like I said, this phone does have dual speakers and it was executed perfectly. These speakers are possibly the loudest speakers on a phone, even to this day, and the stereo setup is perfect unlike the iPhone 7 through iPhone 10, Samsung S9, and the Google Pixel 2. They have amplifiers in the speakers, and both speakers produce the same amount of audio as the other, rather than one being louder than the other. This phone does, however, lack a headset jack. I believe that they had enough room to fit this in the phone. Maybe next year. I find it to be an issue because they have the same restrictions as Google does, meaning that you can't buy some aftermarket adapter. 
you have to buy the one from Razer, which is kind of annoying. Sure, it does come in the box, but if you lose that or if you want to buy another one, you're forced to buy it from Razer. The phone comes with 64GB built in and supports an SD card, making this phone the perfect phone for media. Well, except for the screen brightness. The phone does get pretty warm after long usage, but that's probably because the processor is overclocked. It is a gaming phone after all. It'd be weird if the phone didn't get hot. This phone lacks wireless charging and is not water resistant. I have no excuses for that, but I doubt that the speakers would be as good as they are if the phone was water resistant. Oh, this phone also has 8GB of RAM, which is a pretty good amount, especially because the phone is a gaming phone. Overall, I would say that this phone gets an 8.75 out of 10 for the inside hardware. Next is the camera. The camera's alright. Nothing to really talk about. I'm being serious. The stock camera barely has portrait mode, and that's it. No filters, no slow motion, no 60 frames per second video, no special modes, just pictures, video, and portrait mode. Sure, there are apps that allow software features like recording speeds and filters to be used, but the point is some of this should have been built into the phone. The camera also lacks optical image stabilization, but that's probably because the camera sensors are so close to each other. The pictures don't come out looking that bad. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of the Moto Z2 Force when it comes to taking pictures. Taking pictures at night works, but it doesn't look that good to me. The portrait pictures come out fine, but like the Moto Z2 Force, you'll have to be very still when you take them, or else they won't blur properly. Even then, if the lighting isn't right, they still look weird. As for the front camera, this 8 megapixel sensor sounds good on paper, but it's decent at best. Again, the phone's highlight is clearly not the camera, so the Razer phone gets a 6.5 out of 10. Next is the software. Being the first Razer phone, they had a choice. Go with stock Android or put a Razer skin on it like most phones. Lucky for us, they stuck with stock Android and added some basic apps and customization, and that's it. This phone checks the normal boxes, adding double tap to wake, ambient display, and a stock experience. There is also an app for customizing the app icons, if you're into that. It also comes with Dolby Atmos, which makes the speakers sound even better. There is also a Game Booster app that allows you to control which apps make the phone work more than others. It's pretty cool, but I keep mine at max settings. If you're used to stock Android, there isn't much to talk about. The stock choice makes the phone smoother, so I can't say that this is a bad choice. The software never gets put into the scoring, but it will get an amazing 9.25 out of 10. The last score is a future-proofing score. This phone has been out for a couple months, and it's already kind of getting old. There are some defects to this phone that were done on accident, but some of them were done on purpose. Starting with the accidents, I have to bring up the vibrating mechanism. Just like the Maxon 7 Mini, it just sounds really weird. And I have a feeling this happens on a lot of Razer phones. With this said, it does get the job done, but I can assume that this will get worse over time. There is also an issue with the screen not working properly, which is pretty understandable because the technology is pretty new for this phone. Still, this happened to my phone, so I can assume that this can happen to anyone's phone as well. I have checked some forums and saw a bunch of people complaining about the same issue. My main concern would be the battery, but there are many ways to save battery and the size of the cell is massive at 4000 milliamps. I could assume that Razer knows that this could happen, so hopefully they added a bunch of tech to make the battery lose capacity slower like Samsung did with their S8 and S9 batteries. With this said, the phone gets pretty warm and this may cause the battery capacity to diminish a little bit more than most phones. There is a USB-C port on the bottom, which is expected, but the headset jack is missing, which is not expected. Also, Razer sells a bunch of wired headsets, but you'll need an adapter to use those. Kind of annoying. I find this to be an issue because the phone is larger than most phones. I think they could have made the phone a little bit bigger and added a headset jack. I mean, come on, the phone doesn't have water resistance, so we deserve a headset jack. Oh, did I mention that the aftermarket headset jack adapters don't work on this phone? Yeah, not cool. The Snapdragon 835 processor is a year old, but it should still work perfect for the next two or three years. Also, having 8GB of RAM helps with running apps and multitasking. I never ran into any major lag. The phone is pretty solid in that sense. Now there is a small chance that someone at Razer is watching this video, so I have some things to say to you. The next Razer phone 1 needs a headset jack, 2 wireless charging or water resistance, doesn't have to be both, but that'd be cool if it does, and 3 an OLED screen or a screen with at least 500 nits or more. 
Oh, and a better camera with optical image stabilization. That's all I would want. Overall, I would say that this phone is future-proof and gets an 8 out of 10. Add up the scores and this phone gets a 39.25 out of 50, or 78.5%. Sure, you can say that Razer bought Nextbit and their second phone was the Razer phone, but still, think about that. Their second phone that they created has better speakers, a bigger battery, more RAM, faster screen, and faster processor than the Samsung S8 and even the Samsung S9, minus the processor. Razer did a really good job with this phone and unfortunately won't sell too many phones for the first couple of years, but like Essential and OnePlus, we need phones like these. These phones help break the molds and give customers what they want, not what the companies force us to settle with. This phone retails at $700 but can be found for around $400 in the used market, which isn't too bad. Personally, I would take this phone over the flagship phones in the same rank. Sure, the screen is dim and the phone gets warm, but the refresh rate and the battery is amazing. Fun fact, Razer's headquarters is in San Francisco, California, and they own the THX brand. And that's it. Let me know what else you want me to review in the comment section below or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. And I have a question for you. Should Razer make a second version of this phone? Let me know, and feel free to follow me on the social media listed above. Also, subscribe to my channel so you can see the basics video. Every sub helps. Thanks for watching.